The Voice miserably failed in October last year, but joining us now is One Nation MP Sarah Game, who has been calling for the repeal of South Australia's state-based voice. Sarah, great to see you as always. So, South Australia had one of the highest votes against The Voice, yet now you're going to have a state-based voice. So does democracy not count for anything anymore? What's going on, Sarah? That, that's right. So what I've done actually is last year after 64% of South Australians voted against the federal voice, I introduced a piece of legislation called the Voice Repeal Bill, which essentially removes a piece of legislation that our parliament decided to pass without consulting the people early last year to establish a First Nations voice. And when people ask me, well, what will this bill do? This bill will essentially remove what the government has committed, which is to establish a new bureaucracy of over 100 members. So there will now be over 100 members established here to represent the First Nations people uh, at a cost of over $10 million. Uh, and those people actually aren't obliged to do very much. So once we've established uh, the legislated resourcing and remuneration for these individuals, they are not even required to turn up to Parliament if we request uh, them to do so. Rita. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Can you tell us what debate there was before this legislation was passed? Were the Liberals opposing this? Uh, was there any sort of debate in the lead up to the election about the issue? Look, apparently this was a Labor election promise. I think that's come as a surprise even to many Labor voters. And I just <laughs> want to make the point that even those who possibly uh, may have supported the concept of a First Nations voice to Parliament, they did not understand and they were not informed of the size and the cost. At the time of the debate, uh, I think Labor were hoping for a, a unanimous uh, parliamentary vote on this. In the end, it was split. Uh, Liberals were late uh, to form their opinion. I came mm. out straight away because we just simply don't believe on supporting people based on ancestry or heritage. People in this state and in this country need to be supported on their need. We've got a cost of living crisis here in South Australia. We have families that can't afford their groceries for their children. They can't afford uh, their rent. They're living in cars. And instead of putting our money to help all South Australians in need, we are establishing a new bureaucratic arm. James. So I'm just curious, though. I mean, I'm sure that along with spending all of this money on um, you know, this representative body and a bureaucracy and a lot of people uh, who wind up uh, collecting money out of this, um, what are they doing to help people in the Indigenous communities uh, new that's, uh, that, that's not, uh, that people are not uh, somehow connected in and are going to wind up getting onto this uh, particular gravy train? Well, we're actually having the elections uh, coming up very soon. So I think on the 16th of March, the elections will be held. The nominations have been closed. We find out who the nominees are on Monday. Those individuals have been nominated by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in those local communities. So you must be Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander to vote as according to the, the three part test of identifying as Aboriginal, being Aboriginal and uh, being accepted into an Aboriginal community. Uh, and then those elections will take place on the 16th of March. With regards to your question on how we actually make sure that the people are represented, I think we've really failed to do that. When you establish a voice that contains over 100 members and you include in the piece of legislation establishing that, that it is purely at the whim of that voice, whether they actually represent um, themselves to parliament or not, I think that's a complete and utter failure.